Well, getting closer. Uh, we've got a few bits and bobs to go, but all the end walls closed on a strip up there. And then we'll start finding light holes somehow. Yeah. Uh, all in all, it's been a little bit slow going, but I'm kind of happy with it. So I can't bear with a bit of a look and uh, show you from the way back. So it looks like. currently raining. So far so good. Uh, I haven't any leaks on the floor. I did have leaks initially, which made me re go around re silicon it. But anywho, now I'm going to leave this wall open until I've got the wiring hooked up. Uh, and then that way I can still use, open those doors to get some light. So that'll be the last one. Yeah. Come along, reasonably happy with that. I think looking back, I could have done this probably a lot faster and a lot easier. Um, one, getting the framework built to spec, like so if I'd gone through, I'm thinking now I'd probably turn the framework um, so it's out sideways or whatever the hell you call it. I think not only would it get more strength, but it um, just it would have been a bit easier um, to manage the frames. I think on top of that, I would measure for what the bats were, and then I would have made the frames so they're all the same. And that way, all the screws would have went all in a row to secure the ply. Additionally, as much as I'm taking up more and more space, um, we went with seven mil ply. And we've done seven mil ploy in an effort to save as much space as we possibly could because I guess we've been paranoid that we're encroaching on the workable space and the usable space. But I think looking back, I probably would have rather go 12 mil and just be done with it. The 12 mil probably would have lined up better. A little bit heavier to handle and stuff, but you wouldn't have got the flex and things in it anywhere near as much as seven mil. So looking back, that's probably one one of the big changes to make but um oh no doubt we'll build another one um we've got lots of what well, is for our place up the up at the farm and um our son wants to build a tiny home so maybe we'll use a container for that too anyway uh keep going trying to get this thing closed in and then um once it's closed in we'll make a start on it's all electrical and uh Then I've got moulding, so electrical, moulding, get the end wall done, finish the moulding, and then I'm going to get, see how it comes up, but then I'll probably get a heap of primer, prime all the, um, all the surface in here, ceiling or walls, and then I'll uh, spray it in some sort of white, no doubt, or I'll talk to my wife and see what colour she wants. I'm just going to spray it the whole lot. I don't, I'm not rolling it. I'm spraying it <laughs> so much quicker. Worth every cent of spray guns. So I'll do that. Yeah. Stand by. Oh, so that's probably mistake number. I don't know what, what are we up to? Six, seven hundred? Six fifty? <sighs> I have no framing in the roof to be able to put a piece of ply up in that section in order to be able to paint. It's only about 100 mils. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do there yet. I could try overlapping the pieces, like as if like there's a second piece there and screw it in and glue it or something, I don't know. It's gonna look so dodgy. I'm like the living, walking, breathing, lesson of what not to do. Okay, I've had several stiff beers because uh, stuffed up yet again. I'm pretty good at the regular stuff ups. So, huh. 
Started here. Boom. That was good. Jagged it. Got the next one. Boom. Jagged it. And the third one, wife wasn't happy about it. Third one was uh, right near a joint. It's okay. We got past that. Big problem. It's the fourth one. And, uh, yeah, it was a bit silly. Fourth one I stuffed up entirely. Um, bang. Yep. First one done. Stuffed it. I thought, oh, I'll go for here. Stuffed it. Actually drilled straight into where the rafters were. So, had to make the most of that. Not happy. What are you going to do? Um, I've since discovered that the cables I've used, the cable I've used, I've actually nipped it. Um, and my guru electrician has told me that if you see copper from the actual wire, um, wire's stuffed the whole lot. So, what I'm going to do is going to continue drilling all these crooked holes. And then when I get to here, get the last one, I'm gonna get the roll of wire, sticky tape it onto the end of the cable hanging down all the way down the back down here. And then I'm gonna pull this entire cable all the way back, all the way through. And um, yeah. <laughs> cut it and join it. That's all I can come up with. I'll cut it and I'll join it. So it'd be like a brand new cable. And um, hopefully that solves the problem. Until problem number 8,000 pops up. I'm learning a lot. Okay, another update. So, uh, lights are in. Power points are taped up. Lights are been taped up. Uh, currently installing a ground sheet. I don't know why. Really, eventually this will have a floor on it, but not for a while because I don't want to keep throwing money at this thing constantly. Um, so it's currently going through, tape it all up. Um, now, there will be a gap left here, and it's an unfortunate gap, it is, but the, that gap's there because we want to install cupboards up in that corner. It'll completely go from one side to the other, so I'm not going to go and buy one more sheet of ply to get a 120 mil cut on one more sheet of ply. Um, so I'm just getting ready to paint now. The weather is not ideal. It's, uh, it's been raining a bit. Which has been unfortunate because we've also discovered the container is leaking. Um, on a positive note, we've been able to work through some of our shit pile. So the shit pile is slowly reducing. Let me show you a look at that. Excuse the clothes in the rain. But there's the pile. Uh, obviously a lot of building materials for both inside and outside. Two bench presses are going to go in there eventually. I'm going to put those black mats down as well. I'll clean them up. I've got some over there washed up. So I'm going to put those down for the gym area. That's the paint gun I'm about to use. Drill press will eventually go back into the shed, but I need to get a car off the hoist so I can get that in there. The con's going on this, and other random crap will no doubt get thrown out. So it's been all systems go. Um, we have had a, like a week off it, but um, only because we've been flat out at work. So uh, let's get ready to paint, see how this shows up. With a bit of luck. Um, it doesn't look too bad. So I'm expecting uh, to use a lot of paint on the raw timber. So I'm just going to get some ceiling paint, mix it all in with some other leftover paints. I don't really care. It's not going to be the top coat. Smash it all, give it a nice big thick undercoat, let it soak in, and then we'll go down to the paint shop, pick a colour. It'll be a white. It'll be white on white. And then um, come back and hit it again. And then the final step will be each of these gaps will have the moulding put over the gap. We think we're going to drop that down to a 66mm, we're not sure. We'll see what's in stock when we go 
go to the hardware, which is an hour away. So, yeah, <laughs> hence the hold up. But, um, yeah, come on. So, just got through a bit of a paint job. It's a pretty miserable day. <laughs> Crap day for painting. Make matters worse, the dogs are walking mud everywhere. So now I'm walking mud everywhere. Anyway, the joys. Okay. So, we're in the paint. I'll have it. Oh, I think 10, 12 litres. Um, and obviously this soaked it in really quick. So I've got patches that are missing paint. But like I said, it's only a primary coat. This is kind of like just to undercoat it. So I'll let this dry. Uh, I'll go down to the hardware store tomorrow. Um, probably buy, I don't know, 40 plus litres more. And uh, yeah, I'll finish this. I'm gonna tape around the door. Um, I haven't quite worked out how I'm gonna do that. I've been using this fan to create airflow, pushing all the fumes out the door. It's water-based paint, but still not great for you. So using the uh, fan to push it out, it's a really good fan, 1400 CFM, punches it out. Um, yeah, I guess we'll leave it for tonight to dry. And then uh, tomorrow, come back, start again. And uh, hopefully I'm reasonably happy with the, by the time we get the second coat on. Can't wait to get this finished. <laughs> So we've got some leaking issues progressing. You can see it's gotten into the timber a bit there, so we're gonna have to dry it out. Um, not that this little fella cares, but the, the backyard is an absolute swamp. It's turned into a mud pit. So top of the frame seems to be okay, but we're getting the seepage through the bottom of the frame and with this rain we've had, we've had months worth of rain in two days. So I think I'm going to have to reseal the whole bottom of that. Dry the place out. Which is fantastic news because it's just what I needed. Whoa, good save bud. That looked pro. <laughs> Jack, come inside mate out of the rain. <laughs> good boy. Yeah, someone's going to like it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh dear. All part of the fun. That's what you call it. Some people do this for a hobby. Alright. I'll try and finish this off. I'm trying to uh, limit the amount of crap that goes on my beard. And obviously up my nostrils. Just seal this door in. Um, I'm going to hurry up and get some paint because it's getting a bit warm in here. Despite being a bit cold outside. Yeah. Anyway, we'll start smashing into the paint with 15 litres of sealant, undercoat stuff. Um, just some lad there with the hardware accent multi prep. Hopefully it uh, does the job and goes a bit further than the last batch of paint. <laughs> I won't be able to run the fan this time for extraction, so I better get into it. 
before I cook. Okay, another beautiful update. I, I much rather the building side of stuff than the painting and detail side of stuff. But it's all part of the process. So, here's what it is. So, got uh, two coats on, one by spray gun, and then one rolled. And we're going to do a third coat, just a final, you know, a nice thick final rolled on coat to hopefully give it a bit more consistency across all the walls and, um, yeah, get any patchy bits and fill them in. I'll turn the camera around and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So, you know, what, you know. So if you have a look through the walls here, you can see, you know, the because it's raw uh, ply, you can see there's, oh, maybe it doesn't show up in the camera too well, but there's some grain there and then obviously a few patches where it shines through. It kind of, I guess it'll look like a slight dirty patch, but it's actually just light. So there's a few little bits of patchiness on the roof and obviously where that stands out like dog's balls um, there will be trimming go across that as well as each of these gaps so uh, that'll hopefully plumb it up a bit I mean as I've previously stated I am not a builder so this is about the best we can hope for and for a cheap outside gym and office I think this is fine It'll do the job. Um, if I do another one and the son wants to build a tiny home for himself and potentially for his grandmother or for his nana. So if we have to do more, I think we'll do it better. I think we'll have more of an idea. So that's something we're gonna do. You know, we'll talk to him about because I'm keen for him to be able to do his own house. I'm keen for him to invest in his future. He's only 11, but better start now, better late than never. I'd rather get him get ahead now and have a little place to put up on our property. And he can live away from us from the house and we'll uh, enjoy some peace and quiet. But uh, yeah, it's coming along. Uh, might wrap this up for a little bit because um, obviously I've got some more paint to do and then I've got to uncover everything and get it hooked up. I've still got some more jobs to do, so I've um, got all the trims to do. But before I do that, I'll probably strip everything out once the paint's done. Move some gym gear in here, move some office gear in here, just so I can get the clutter off the back deck and out of the house. And I've got to put the air conditioning uh, system in, which I would get a professional to do that, I think. Uh, I'll probably weld up a bracket and mount it to the back of the container to, so it's out of the way. I'm thinking I'll make a shade cover for it. I'll do some research and work out if that's the in thing, if that's how I should do it. But yeah, so far so good. I'm looking forward to having it powered up with aircon and usable. And it's relatively quiet in here. So I think the insulation was a really good investment. Pain in the bum, but a really good investment. Uh, yeah. Anyway, hopefully when I can pick this back up again. Um, yeah, hopefully we can make more progress and then make a start on the garage section because I want to put some storage solutions in there, some lighting. Maybe a winch to pull the motorbikes in. I've got two bikes that I want to put on trickle charges. Um, I like having my motorcycles tucked away in bed. You know they say, if they're cold, if you're cold, they're cold. Bring them in. So I want to bring me bikes uh, in and lock them away and keep them safe. So, yeah. Anyway. Cheers.